Hey, yesterday when I was thinking about doing this Facebook Live about how to enhance your physical performance as an athlete, if you're a parent watching this and that's a goal for your athlete, they want to go to college, they want to play at the next level, when I was thinking about doing this live, I had so many thoughts over the last 10 years of working with student athletes, we've seen in our doors, we've seen over 65 athletes get to the next level to play in college on scholarships, but most important of all, staying healthy, feeling good, and not sacrificing positive well-being, mental health, emotional health along the way. It's really rare. And what I want to talk to is talk to you about is really physical performance. Like straight up, how does my kid perform at their peak or how do I if I'm the athlete? How do I perform at peak performance? And I found that there's so many there's so many philosophies out there, there's, there's so much complexity to it, but it's really simple. It's super simple, but it's not overly simple. And so I'm gonna explain what I mean by all that when I walk through this chart. Um, and so stick with me to the end because I'm gonna share some things that I can guarantee you, you've never heard before. And if you're an athlete looking to just get 1% better, and you know that if you just get 1% better, it could take you from the sixth man to being on the starting five, it could take you from where you are now to that college scholarship. I promise you there's gonna be something valuable in here for you to hear because this is 10 years of experience of obsession, truthfully. This is the stuff that I nerd out about, how to help an athlete run faster, hit harder, um, not get knocked over, but instead be the one knocking people over. People over. It's the stuff that I've obsessed over for 10 years of my career and I wanna share with you guys. So, performance enhancement simplified. Desired outcome. There are some desired outcomes that you guys already see right here that every single student athlete wants to achieve, especially the ones that are serious about taking their performance to another level. There's really simple things. Every athlete wants to throw harder in some capacity if they're a throwing athlete. Softball, baseball, quarterback, there's all sports that have to do with throwing harder. Every student athlete wants to hit further, hit harder. You're a golfer, you wanna be able to swing harder. Um, you are a baseball player, you wanna be able to hit harder, hit with more power, hit with more force. Um, you are a, uh, let's call it a hockey player, you wanna hit the puck harder. Every athlete, for the most part, that's in a hitting sport, wants to hit further, hit harder. And so it's simple, the outcome that you want, guys, the outcome that your son or daughter wants is super, super simple, but this is called beginning with the end in mind. You have to start thinking about what the end outcome is so that you don't fall into one of these myths or mistakes that I find people fall into so often and start doing the wrong things because you haven't thought about what your end goal really is. Run faster. I mean, unless you're a swimmer, you wanna run faster. If you're a swimmer, you wanna swim faster. This is being able to move your body faster, quicker, with more frequency and repetition and force. That's really what running faster is. Putting more power into the ground or into the water, which is a whole different discussion. And then stay healthy, because this is part of the physical side of performance. I've always told athletes, I don't care how strong, how fast, how powerful, how much of a beast you are on the field, if you're injured, if you tear your ACL, if you get an ankle sprain, you're good to nobody. You're sitting on the bench and all that strength and power is for nothing. So, if these are the four outcomes that you guys want, which I know it is, over the last 10 years I've seen this, this is what everybody wants, what are the myths and mistakes that you guys are making that you might be making? Well, I'll tell you the first one, people who wanna throw harder, and even the ones for people who wanna hit further and hit harder, the mistakes that you're making, the reason why you're not elevating your game to the level that you want it, or maybe you are, but there's another level for you, it's because you think that throwing more or having better mechanics, or more reps, more swing time, or more time swinging, or doing upper body training, you think that that is the key, and it's not. Those things help refine your movements, and they help refine the strength and power that you develop. Guys, if you wanna throw harder, hit further, hit harder, start training two, three, four days a week, lifting weights, and not just lifting weights, but like strength training. Because you can be a bodybuilder and go in there and hit the weights and do bicep curls all day, 
but your bicep curls are not gonna develop power from the ground up and help you to transfer your energy, if you're a baseball player, from your lower body through your core to your upper body. I don't care how many bicep curls you do, how many bench presses you do, that alone is not gonna do it. You have to have a comprehensive strength training approach. You've gotta hire a professional and you gotta get the work in and you can't just do it for three months. You can't just do it for six months. Depending on the level that you wanna to rise to, that is how consistent over the long haul you really gotta be. And I can't emphasize that enough because I see people go into training with false expectations. They think that after 12 weeks, well they don't think, that's the problem, but they, they assume that after 12 weeks they should be a way better athlete. Some people's bodies respond that way and some people's bodies can, boom, after 12 weeks of training, they're hitting the ball 50 feet further, but some people it's not the case. But what is true for you, what is true for me, what is true for every athlete, is that if you do it over the long haul, you will get better, you will level up your game, but you gotta be consistent, it's called the compound effect. So, if you wanna throw harder, hit further, hit harder, this is not the solution. This is important, but th if this is a desired outcome, you have to train lower body, core, upper body, and then integrate it all. The perfect example is, when you're a baseball player, your strength, if you're a right-handed hitter, your strength in your legs transfers through the hips across the core into the upper body. So you have to have it all working together and that's a really, really, really important thing that a lot of people make the mistake of. Not all training is created equal. If you wanna run faster, it's the same exact concept. Same exact concept of running more and improving your running form. Both of those things are good. Right, going out and jogging, it's good for cardiovascular health, it might be good for your mind, help relieve stress, but if your desired outcome is to run faster, guys, this isn't gonna do it for you, it's not gonna do it for your son or daughter, and I can promise you, if you're competing against some other people for a position, or you're trying to go to college and you're about to play with the big dogs, the best ones understand that they need to strength train, they need to develop power into the ground. And yes, running form can be really important if you're trying to improve a 40 yard dash, let's say, and milliseconds help. But 95% of athletes in a game situation, running, working on your running form is not gonna help you run faster. It's not gonna help you run faster. It might look better, and mom or dad might stop saying that my kid runs like chicken, like a chicken, or you're gonna flail their arms all over the place. That might help, but if you wanna run faster, dude, I've seen some athletes who can fly on the field, like they are just speed demons, and their running form is awful. Because think about it, the sports where you're like holding a lacrosse stick, or um, you're skating, like you're not thinking about your running form. It does help, so if you're a strength coach, a speed coach, don't, kill me on this one, but it's really not the biggest thing. If you wanna run faster, you gotta get stronger. You gotta put yourself into a weight room with a strength coach who's gonna push you to, to lift more weights, to lift faster, to lift more powerfully and more explosively, and you gotta do it progressively over the long term. You have to do it over time. Wherever you are now, it's not too late. You just gotta start now and keep building as you go. Consistency, consistency, consistency. All right, last one. You wanna stay healthy. There's a lot of myths with this one. If your desired outcome is to stay healthy and stay on the field because you've been having ankle tweaks or knee pain or your calves have been tight or your whatever the case, your shoulder's been hurting, it might not have turned into an injury yet, which is good, I'm glad it hasn't, but think about it, it's affecting your performance. Like it's affecting your physical performance if you're not at 100%. Here's the deal, the mistake that people make when they ignore this one is fear, number one. If I don't keep playing year round, five days a week, every single day, I'm gonna fall behind. It's conformity at its best. It's looking around at what everybody else is doing. All the other athletes are playing all year round. All the other athletes are playing on three different club teams at once. I have to too, because if I don't, I'll fall behind. Any idea why that's a mistake and why it's just a myth and why it couldn't be further from the truth? 
Look at professional athletes. Look at division one high level athletes. Look at Olympians. What is the one commonality of all of them? All of them take three months off their sport every year. Steph Curry might get a basketball in his hand and keep shooting over those three months, but I can tell you both mentally and physically and emotionally, the dude needs a break. Like he just played his butt off for nine months. He needs to chill for a little while and you do too. And if you've got the fear of falling behind and you got the fear that if you stop playing for a certain period of time that you're not gonna be as good, don't knock it till you try it. If you've never tried to take three months off, you can't say it doesn't work. You have to try it. And again, desired outcome, right? We have, to, we have to really pay attention to what that end goal is. If the desired outcome is to stay healthy and you have not been healthy up to this point, you keep getting tweaks, you keep having aches, pains, bumps, bruises, you gotta do something different. You gotta address this fear. You gotta punch it in the face. You have to ignore what everybody else is doing because if you do what the masses are doing, you're going to get what the mass results are and that's why .0003% of people play division one sports. Think about it. Again, desired goal, desired outcome. Are you trying to take it to another level? Do you want your physical performance to be the highest it's ever been? If so, you can't do what everybody else is doing. You have to go against the grain, against the crowd. No more conformity. We gotta stop that, guys, especially if you're trying to get to the next level. And then more is more. This kind of goes back to these two as well. But the reason why people can't stay healthy is because they think that more workouts is the solution. I've been telling you guys this whole time that we need to work out, we need to get in the weight room. But once you start, like if you got that all or nothing mentality and you're like, now that I'm training, I gotta train six days a week, one and a half hours every single day, and I gotta go for runs, I gotta for that, like more is not more. The best of the best know that sometimes the way to speed up is to slow down. The way to take it to another level is to relax a little bit. And strength improvements and speed improvements and Health happens when you're resting. And so you can't have this mentality anymore, guys. More is not more, better is better. That's true. Better approaches are producing better results, but more does not always mean better. So these are the four, guys. These are the four big ones that if these are the desired outcomes you have, and this has been your approach so far, and if you're not quite getting the results that you want, this is why, this is exactly why. So rewatch this video, but I do have a bonus for you. I have a bonus for you because I love you and because you're watching this video right now. And I ran out of paper. So this bonus is on the cardboard on the back of the flip chart. So, ready for it? The bonus outcome that I know every parent wants for their kid and every athlete wants for themselves and this is where you become a captain, this is where you become a leader, this is where you can be a freshman on a college team and make a difference right off the bat. You don't have to be a freshman and then a sophomore and then a junior and then finally, senior year, you get some influence, you get some leadership and coach notices you. That doesn't have to be the case. I've seen it before. You wanna lead through adversity. You wanna be able to stay strong and stay resilient and keep this right even when times get tough. And you wanna stay positive even in the worst moments of the game, even when the team's getting crushed. I know one of your outcomes that you want is you want to be able to stay positive, but your emotions fill up and your emotions flare up and you, you get overreactive and you, you know, you're up here and then it's a roller coaster and then your emotions are down here because things aren't going well and people mess this up. You know why? Number one, they think motivation equals mindset. So you might have some coaches, you might have some trainers who are really good at getting you riled up and jacked up. But then you go into a game and all the same mistakes happen. You fold under pressure. You, um, you make a mistake and then it snowballs into the next one. And I know you know what I'm talking about here. You've been motivated by a coach before, but for some reason, your mindset hasn't changed. You haven't prepared mentally for the game. You haven't changed the way you think about failure, about adversity. And it's the reason why is because you don't have a mental game solution. You don't have a solution right now to work on the mental game. I'll give you one tip and then we're gonna shut this video down and you can message us if you have any questions. One tip, if you want to be better in the game with your mind, 
is to work on your mind before the game. And I know it sounds so simple, but when you sit down and you pause long enough to think about the kind of person you wanna be, the kind of athlete you wanna be in the face of adversity, and you really think about it and you close your eyes and you visualize, if coach takes me out of the game, this is how I'm going to act. This is how I'm going to respond. If I get beat, right, in the last stretch of the 100 meter dash and the girl edges me out, this is how I will respond. You don't wanna overthink this because then you'll start to have a self-fulfilling prophecy and you'll lose, but you do wanna prepare mentally for the game. You know, if I mess up or make an error, I'm a baseball player and the ball goes between my legs, I will tell myself, next play, move on, honor the struggle, face it. These are the things that the best of the best athletes are doing. They're preparing mentally before games because they recognize that the masses they have no mental game solution, and as a result, they're not leading through adversity. They're not able to stay positive when the game's going tough. And if you wanna be different and stand out, train the mental game. If you need help doing so, message us. This is what we're all about. We recognize this is a hole, this is a gap, and not enough people are training the mind. And then of course, all these other things, guys. Let's get real. If you don't. If you don't achieve these things and you're coming into the gym and training two, three, four days a week, something's wrong. These things will happen. It's just so easy. The hard part really is this. The thing that people need help with and guidance on is the mental game. So let us know if you need help. Guys, thanks for watching this Facebook Live. We appreciate you so much. Hop on our next one. We'll see you soon.